Hello, my name is Laura. I'm the owner of You Are Loved Templates, and I create spreadsheet templates for productivity and lifestyle. And today I'm going to be showing you how to make a dynamic calendar that changes when you choose the month in the year. This is the first YouTube video where I am actually showing myself, so get used to it. Let's get cozy, let's light a candle, get your favorite beverage of choice, and let's get started on building this dynamic calendar. Let's start out with a blank Google Sheet and label it whatever you want. I'll do calendar, I think that's how you spell it. And then we'll go over to column J and then click Command Shift right arrow key or Control Shift right arrow key if you're on a PC. We'll right click and delete those columns. I like to delete the columns and rows that aren't needed first and foremost just to get those out of the way so we know what area we're working within. But that's just how I do it. Let's go to row 43 and same thing, but we'll do command shift down arrow key this time, right click and delete. Now let's go to B all the way to H. Let's highlight all of those, right click resize to 120. And then we'll hold down the command button or control button on PC and select A and I, right click resize to 45. Next, let's highlight B2 to G3 and merge those guys together. Then I'll just highlight that plus H2 and H3, go to borders and select all borders. This is where we're gonna put our months and years, but we'll get into that in a second. Let's go to B5 to H5 and we'll do all borders here. We'll highlight B6 to H11 and this time we'll do an outer border and then a vertical border. And while it's still highlighted, let's do a command C and then paste that five times. So one, two, three, four, and five. So now we have our calendar structure all set up. Let's do the drop down menu for the months in H2. And we'll go over to data and data validation. Let's click add a rule and then we'll type in all of our months here. And depending on how you like the aesthetic, I like to choose the display style as an arrow. Or if you do plain text, it just has a blank cell and when you double click you can see it, but it does, it's not very clear that it's a drop down menu, so I like to put it at arrow. And then click done. Now let's do it for the years while we're here. I'll click into H3 and add a rule. And then type in any relevant years that you want to have. Or you can just leave this blank and manually type in the years since you don't have to do it as often. But I'll just, I like a drop down menu, let's do it. 2028, 20, 2029, 20, and I'll go up to 2030. And then I'll click advanced options and do arrow as well. Now I'll click done. So now we have all of the months. I'll choose July 2025. And here is where we are going to combine the month and the year to display as a nice header. So we'll do equals concatenate parenthesis, and then we'll select that month in H2, comma, quote, space, quote, comma, and then we'll select that year. So now it says July 2025. It's basically just combining the texts together with a space in between because we added that. Let's type in our weekdays now in B5. I'll do Sunday, and then C5, Monday, Tuesday, and you don't have to type all of them in. You can highlight these three and then drag it over and it should fill in for you. I'm gonna click this little uh, rectangle in the corner up here and just center everything for now. And then I'll highlight row six. I'll hold the command button down, 12, eight, four, or 24, 30, and 36. And I'll select bold and then align to the right. We can make this header larger, about 18 bold. And if I select this button again, I can choose a font. I'll do Nunito. And this header, I typically choose Merriweather. I'll go to 20. 
Great, so we have the foundation all set up. Let's get into the formulas. Now there are many different ways to do this. This is just how I do it. Um, so let's get started. We're gonna be adding the days at the top of each of these cell sections here. So let's start on Sunday and I'll explain a little bit after we do it. Let's do equals if weekday parenthesis and then we will highlight where it says the month and year. And let's anchor that in by adding two dollar signs before and one, one before the column, one after the column to anchor in that cell. And then we'll do end parenthesis equals and then column. I guess that's what it wants to do, okay. Column and then two parentheses minus one comma one comma and then two quotes and parentheses. Now nothing's gonna pop up because in July 2025, it does not start on a Sunday, so it's just gonna stay blank. This formula is an if statement. So it's saying if this weekday is equal to the column that we're currently in, then a one will pop up, and if not, it will be blank. This weekday, B2, this is where our month and year is, and it's giving me a numerical value depending on what weekday it is. So Sunday is one, Monday is two, Tuesday is three. So you can see a little three right here, so July 2025 should start on a Tuesday. If that is equal to the column that we're currently in, which is Sunday, which is one, then it would say one in that spot. But it's not equal, so it's just leaving it blank. Let's move on over to Monday. This one's a little bit longer, but we should only have to really type this in once. We'll do equals if weekday parenthesis, and then we'll select that B2 and anchor that in parenthesis equals column, kind of like what we did before, two parentheses minus one comma one, but this time instead of it being blank, we'll do if ABS or absolute parenthesis, we'll select B6 and parenthesis is greater than zero, then it will add one. So we'll do B6 plus one, comma, and then two quotes and two end parentheses. So that one's a little bit longer, but if we drag this out this way, it should show us one, two, three, four, and five now. So what it's basically doing is it's looking at the day before and adding one if that number is greater than zero, which it is, it's one, so then it just adds one to that, and then it's two, and then three, then four, then five. But now let's go down to this section, and it's a bit different, but after we do this one, we should be able to just copy and paste for the rest of the days. What we'll do is equals if day, parenthesis, B2, let's anchor that in, plus, and we'll select H6, parenthesis, is greater than one, comma, day, parenthesis. And we can just copy and paste what we just did. Paste it down here. And parenthesis, comma, quote, quote, and parenthesis. Now, if we drag this over, what we'll want to do is replace this I6 with C12, B12, and then same with this I6, we'll do B12, enter. And now we can drag it all the way over. And now we can copy and paste them in the rest of the rows. Now this calendar is fully automated and you can go ahead and select the month and it will display the calendar or maybe if you wanna choose a different year, it'll show that. So I'm gonna go back to July 2025. And now let's get into some conditional formatting and fill colors just to make it look a little bit better. One thing that I really like about this calendar is the conditional formatting that makes this a gray color if there is no date in this top section here. So if I select a different month, then you can see the shading changes. So let's do that conditional formatting on our calendar. The first thing I want to do actually is go to view, show, and uncheck the grid lines, and that gets rid of the grid lines. And we can go to the header up here and choose a color. You can skip this step, you don't have to do it. But I just like to do it right off the bat. And I'll choose some colors that I like. Okay, 
Perfect. Let's highlight this first section first and we'll right click view more cell actions and conditional formatting. What we're going to do is a custom formula. We'll do equals and then we're going to look at what this first cell is here, which is B6. B6 equals and then two quotes. But what we'll want to do is add a dollar symbol right after the B. And what we basically just did is lock in that row six. So it's only going to be looking at row six. And then we can choose a fill color. Now we're going to continue on by adding another rule and changing the range to this second section. I don't foresee you ever actually needing this now that I think about it. Um, unless like the day starts down here for some reason, which I don't think it would. So actually let's skip that. Um, what we'll do instead is this section down here and click okay, but we'll replace this six with 30 because that is the first cell here. And then we will add another rule, change the range, highlight this last section, click okay. And you can see that this first cell is in the row 36. So I'll just replace the zero with a six. And then there you have it. So now when you select the month and year, it will be grayed out on the days that aren't relevant to that month. And then you can get a little fun with it. You can add different borders. What I like to do sometimes is add those grid lines back without having to have the grid lines everywhere. What I'll do is I'll highlight this section and I will go choose a gray color that matches what we just chose to fill in. So then it, it disappears um, over it. I'll show you what I mean. So it was this gray and then choose horizontal border and the top border as well. So you can have these lines in here, but they won't appear because they're the same color as the gray. So you could just continue on with that. I'll do horizontal and then the top one. And now you have a calendar with automated dates that fill in. One thing that you can do is go down here and duplicate and then select the next month. That way you can save the data from the previous month and you could label this as August, for example, sep September, and so on. But if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below or email me at templatesyouareloved at gmail.com. One thing that really helps me is if you just send your link directly to me and say like, well, what is wrong with this? So I can take a closer look. That way there's no miscommunication back and forth. But otherwise, I hope you guys have a great day and thank you for joining me in this tutorial.